Are you ready for some bedtime stories from Wood Library? I'm Mrs. Ferris and I've got my friend Bernard here and we've picked out some really good stories tonight. So let's get started. Did you like the snow that we got here? Well, this is a story about, well, what happens when it snows? This is called The Missing Mitten Mystery and it's written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. And this book is published by Dial Books for Young Readers. Oscar, I lost my other mitten. That makes five mittens this winter. I'm in big trouble. Let's search every place we played today. We started at the hill where we rode on Ralph's sled. Oh, here's Ralph's boot, but there's no mitten. I'll look around the castles we built with Ralph and Herbie and Ruth. That was fun. Well, here's Ralph's other's boot and Ruth's sock and Herbie's sweater, but no mitten. <gasps> Oscar, you found it. Wow, <laughs> a flying mitten. Oh, it's only a little bird. I wonder if he stole my mitten to make a snuggly nest. It would be a good one. But no, he's too small to carry off a mitten. But an eagle could do it. Maybe an eagle took my mitten to keep his baby's head warm. Do you think my mitten got tired of being a mitten? Maybe it's just slipped off my hand and hopped away. <laughs> there are no mitten tracks, but here are some mouse tracks toward the wood pile. Could that mouse be using my mitten for a sleeping bag? Or maybe he'll wear it next Halloween and be a mitten mummy. Boo. Let's see if I dropped my mitten while we were making the snowman to surprise Miss Seltzer. Oh, I haven't seen your mitten, Annie, but why don't you look in the garden where you were making snow angels? Well, finding missing mittens is hard work. It would be easier to just grow new ones. Let's try planting the other mittens right here in the garden. And then next spring, when the snow melts, a little mitten tree might sprout. And Miss Seltzer and I would take good care of it all summer long, watering it and weeding it and giving it fertilizer. And in the fall, we'd pick ripe mittens. And then I'd give mittens on Christmas to all my friends and anyone else who needed them. And I'd give mittens for birthdays and mittens on Valentine's Day. Oh, Oscar, it's getting dark and it's starting to rain. We'll never find that mitten. Annie, come inside. I made some hot cocoa for us and I've got a biscuit for Oscar, said Miss Seltzer. Look, the rain is melting the snowman, but what's that spot on his chest? My gracious, your snowman has a heart. <laughs> My mitten is the heart of the snowman. I guess we solved that mystery. Well, let's do a finger play about mittens. You know, mittens are gloves where your fingers are all together and just your thumbs are by themselves. You put your thumbs in the thumb holes and fingers all together. Why, this is the song that we can say in mitten weather. It doesn't matter if they're made of wool or leather. You just put your thumbs in the thumb holes and fingers all together. This is the rhyme that we can say in mitten weather. Do you have mittens or have you lost them? Well, we're going to have another story. And we're going to use our hands or our paws to clap. This is, if it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. 
This is written by Kim Norman with illustrations by Liza Woodruff. And it's published by Sterling Children's Books. And I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna have to sing this one. If it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. Clap, clap. You can tumble in the tundra just because. If it's snowy and you know it, roll a snowball up and throw it. If it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. Skate around or make some angels on the lake. If your fur is full of flurries, you'll forget your winter worries. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. Give your tiny friends a ride behind your knees. If the skies are crisp and clearing, let a walrus do the steering. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. Uh-oh, they crashed, but they got up and did it again. Now, if it's shimmery and sunny, sculpt a friend. If he topples, it's an easy job to mend. If it's shimmery and sunny, borrow glasses from a bunny. If it's shimmery and sunny, sculpt a friend. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort. Leaving room for all your buddies, tall or short. If it's frosty and you're freezing, add some curtains that are pleasing. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. Get some help from white belugas off the shore. If it's drafty and you're drifting, hail a whale for heavy lifting. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. Did you just roar? Good for you. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. Make a promise that you'll write to friends you'll miss. If at last you're finally landing, leave the float that you've been commanding. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. If it's starry and you're starving, share a meal. There's enough for all from caribou to seal. If it's starry and you're starving, add a sparkly iceberg carving. If it's starry and you're starving, share a meal. If it's arctic and you're aching, soak your toes. Hold a steamy cup of cocoa to your nose. If it's arctic and you're aching, give your paws a gentle baking. If it's arctic and you're aching, soak your toes. If it's wintry and you're weary, go inside. Paint a picture of the icy sports you've tried. If it's wintry and you're weary, read a book that's warm and cheery. If it's wintry and you're weary, go inside. If it's sleeting and you're sleepy, climb in bed. Tuck your tails and paws and fins beneath the spread. If it's sleety and you're sleepy, Snuggle up with something sheepy. There's a world of wild adventures in your head. They're all asleep. They're all dreaming. And none of them are jumping on the bed. But I think we should do our rhyme about some monkeys jumping on the bed. Well, I've got five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. One fell off and he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. 
One fell off and bumped his head. So Obama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So then two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So Mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So her mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Now, I hope you've all had dinner by now. You should. I haven't, but I will when I get home. But we're gonna have a story now. This is a new book at the library and this is called Crocodile Hungry. It's written by Aisha Sumner with illustrations by John Marks. And it's published by Tundra Books. Crocodile Hungry. What can crocodile eat? Canned ham? Too hard to open. Beef jerky? Gets stuck in teeth. Eggs? Bite shell? Get toothache? What can crocodile eat? Oh, crocodile nose. Go to farmer's market. Nope, everyone screaming, market ruined. Grocery store? Cart handle, much too high. Crocodile performs acrobatic feet to reach cart. No applause, everyone screaming. Community garden? Oh, crickets. Crocodile not see rows of lettuce. Lettuce ruined. Everyone screaming. Crocodile not like lettuce anyway. Crocodile so hungry. Starting to get hangry. Crocodile wants food now. Crocodile's tummy grumbles. Crocodile's so tired of being hungry. Crocodile sad now. Crocodile cries. Crocodile tears for days, weeks. Crocodile surrounded by nice sized pond now. Birds visit. Pretty pink birds. Flamingo birds. Crocodile's tummy rumbles. No summer sausage in pond. No bacon or bologna, no lamb chops or linguine, only pink marshmallow birds on stilts. What can crocodile eat? Hmm. Crocodile nose. Order pizza.
I was afraid he was going to eat either those flamingos or maybe some of the little fish down at the bottom. I'm so glad he didn't. Of course, he could have had a hot dog. I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, did you like that story about the crocodile? We're going to have another crocodile story. Sort of. This is called Guji Guji. This is written and illustrated by Shi Yan Chen. And is published by Kane Miller Book Publishers. An egg was rolling on the ground. Can you see it there? It rolled through the trees, across the meadow. It rolled all the way down the hill. And finally, it rolled right into a duck's nest. Mother duck didn't notice. She was reading. Well, soon enough, the eggs began to crack. The first duckling to hatch had blue spots and mother duck called him crayon. The second duckling had brown stripes. Zebra, mother decided. The third duckling was yellow and mother duck named him Moonlight. A rather odd looking duckling hatched from the fourth egg. Gucci Gucci, it said, and that became its name. Now mother duck taught her four ducklings how to swim how to dive, and how to waddle. Gucci Gucci always learned more quickly than the others. He was bigger and stronger too. But no matter how quick they were or what they looked like, Mother Duck loved all her ducklings the same. And then one terrible day, three crocodiles came out of the lake. Now they looked a lot like Guji Guji. The crocodiles were smiling and when they laughed with their mouths wide open, the whole world could see their big pointed teeth. The three crocodiles saw Guji Guji and smiled some more. Look at that ridiculous crocodile. He's walking like a duck. Well, Guji Guji heard them. I am not walking like a duck. I am a duck, he explained. Well, the crocodiles laughed. Look at yourself. No feathers, no beak, no big webbed feet. What you have is blue gray skin, sharp claws, pointed teeth, and the smell of a bad crocodile. You're just like us. Well, the first crocodile said, your blue gray body lets you hide underwater without being seen, so you can get close to fat, delicious ducks. The second crocodile said, oh, big sharp claws help you hold fat, delicious ducks tightly so they don't get away. The third crocodile said, pointed teeth are necessary so you can chew fat, delicious ducks. Mmm, yum. The three crocodiles grinned. We know you live with the ducks. 
Take them to the bridge tomorrow and practice diving. We'll wait underneath with our mouths wide open. Well, why would you do that? Gucci Gucci asked. And why should I listen to you? Because we're all crocodiles and crocodiles help each other. And the bad crocodiles grinned again and then vanished into the grass. Well, Guji Guji felt terrible. He sat by the lake to think, is it true? Am I a bad crocodile too? He looked down into the lake and made a fierce face. <laughs> and then Guji Guji laughed. Oh, he looked ridiculous. I'm not a bad crocodile. Of course, I'm not exactly a duck either. But the three crocodiles are nasty and they want to eat my family. I must think of a way to stop them. So Guji Guji thought and thought until he finally thought up a good idea and he went home happy and content. That night, the three bad crocodiles sharpened their pointed teeth, all while thinking of fat, delicious ducks. They were ready for their feast. So the next day, Guji Guji did as he'd been told. He took the flock of ducks to the bridge to practice diving. The three bad crocodiles were waiting for the ducks underneath the bridge. But it wasn't fat, delicious ducks that dropped from the bridge. Mm -mm -mm. It was three big, hard rocks. And those crocodiles had their mouths wide open and the crocodiles bit down and crack, crack, crack went their pointed teeth. And the three bad crocodiles ran as fast as they could. And in barely a minute, they were nowhere to be seen. Guji Guji had saved the ducks. Guji Guji was the duck hero of the day. And that night, all the ducks danced and celebrated. Guji Guji continued to live with Mother Duck, Crayon, Zebra, and Moonlight. And every day, he became a stronger and happier Crack-a-Duck. And a smart one he was, wasn't he? Well, shall we do another finger play that does have a crocodile in it? I've got five little monkeys who are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Well, along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. But did he catch one of those monkeys? He did not. That monkey hid. So hide one of your monkeys. Four little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. But he didn't catch a monkey. Hide another one away. Three little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So two little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. One little monkey is swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So no little monkeys are swinging in the tree. I better watch out so he won't catch me. <laughs> All right, I think we've got time for one more book before we have our flannel board. So we've got a story called, Who Said Coo? This is written by Deborah Ruddle and illustrated by Robin Luebs. 
and it is published by Beach Lane Books. There's a sign on the mailbox that says Lulu's Cottage. And there's a sign on the door that says, do not disturb. Lulu's room was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it. Until somebody, somewhere, said, Coo! Who said coo? asked Lulu. Pigeon, was it you? But Pigeon didn't answer. Not a peep, not a cheep, not a coo. Lulu headed back to bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody, somewhere, went, Ooh. Who said who? asked Lulu. Owl, was it you? But Owl didn't answer. Not a chirp, not a tweet. Not a who. Lulu climbed back into bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody, somewhere, went, <sighs> Lulu knew, oh yes, she knew exactly who said moo. Two bad birds, that's who. Pigeon, owl, yelled Lulu. Not one more moo from either of you. Now, shoo. So off they flew. Lulu snuggled back into bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody somewhere went Ooh. the first one boo hoo and then two boo hoo but what on earth would lulu do while well, she raced outside calling pigeon owl is that you I'm sorry, I said shoo. What I should have said was shh. And when the boo-hoo stopped, Lulu invited Pigeon and Owl inside for some cocoa and a good night's sleep. Until Did Lulu yell at you-know-who? Did she holler, was it you? No, not Lulu. Rooster, she whispered. Could you come back later? Say, around two? Sure, said Rooster. Anything for you. So Lulu snuggled back into her cozy bed in her quiet room and snoozed the whole morning through. So did Owl and Pigeon too. And then somebody somewhere said, Phew. do you see who? Noises in the night. Well, did you bring your bubble gum today? Let's reach in our pockets. And if you don't have a real pocket, just pretend you do and pull it out. If it has a wrapper, unwrap it because you don't want to eat that. And then pop the gum in your mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, put your hand out. I'll count to three and spit your gum in your hand. One, two, three. Oh, this is disgusting. And put your other hand right on top. And now your hands are stuck together with 
Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. Well, we don't want to leave it there, so let's say that word. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever's around. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. And let's have our flannel board story. Now, when we start out, I'm not sure if you'll even be able to see it, but there's a tree on here. Well, fall was over, winter was here, and all the trees were bare except for one apple tree with one last apple on it. Well, Hare happened to run by and he saw that apple and he thought, oh, that apple looks good. I want it. Well, he jumped and he jumped at the apple, but it was way too high. Well, Crow landed in the tree and just laughed at Hare. And Hare said, oh, Crow, would you pick that apple for me, please? Mmm, said Crow. That apple looks good. I want it. So Crow picked the apple right off the tree and flew away with it. But the apple was so heavy that she dropped it. And it landed right on Hedgehog and got stuck. What a nice surprise, said Hedgehog. And she ran away with it. Whoa! Well, wait, cried Hare. That apple is mine. I saw it first. No, 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 said Crow. That apple is mine. I picked it. And Hedgehog came back and said, no, this apple is mine. I caught it. I saw it first, said Hare. I picked it. I caught it. Well, they started yelling and yelling back and forth and all around until finally someone called out, What's going on? And it was Bear. Bear said, who saw that apple first? I did, said Hare. Hmm, said Bear. Who picked it? I did, said Crow. Hmm, said Bear. And who caught it? Asked Bear. I did, said Hedgehog. Oh, said Bear. Well, then each of you deserves the apple. But there's only one apple, said Hare and Crow and Hedgehog. Well, said Bear, let's divide it evenly so each of you gets a piece. So Bear decided that's just what he would do, and the others agreed. Hedgehog cut the apple and gave a piece to Hare for finding it, and gave a piece to Crow for picking it and gave a piece to Hedgehog for catching it, and there was one piece left. Who's this piece for, asked Bear. You, said Hedgehog, 
because you stopped us from fighting. You had the good idea that we could divide the apple and then each of us could have some. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Bear, for stopping us from fighting and coming up with this great idea. So they all ate up their apple pieces. And then they all went on home. And the only one left was a worm who said, hey, that apple was mine. And she had to crawl away to find another. I'm glad they found a way to share. If they'd only known Worm was there, they might have been able to divide it, not into four pieces, but five. So they could all have some. Well, our last book is, of course, a Sandra Boynton book, and it's the Going to Bed book. And this one is published by Little Simon. I'll hold it a little closer so you can see the pictures, because it's a little book. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, why they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And then down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock, and rock to sleep. Good night. Well, thank you for joining me and Bernard for some stories. You can leave a comment to let us know you are here, and we hope you'll come back next Wednesday night for some more bedtime stories here on Facebook with Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library.